Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Renu Kataria with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana in Uttar Pradesh through video conferencing. Both houses of parliament witness frequent disruptions over Pegasus snooping, farm laws and other issues. Country crosses 49 crore mark under nationwide vaccination drive. COVID-19 recovery rate stands at 97.37%. Center asks states to consider imposing COVID restrictions and curb mass gatherings in view of upcoming festivals. Rescue and relief operations in full swing in the flood affected areas of Madhya Pradesh. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar begins his two day visit to Iran from today. Indian and Russian armies begin joint exercise Indra 2021 at Volgograd in Russia. U.S. approves arms sales worth $750 million to Taiwan amid tensions with China. Indian men's hockey team scripts history with bronze medal win in Tokyo Olympics. Prime Minister congratulates Team India on their historic feat. Wrestlers Ravi Dahiya to fight for Olympic gold medal and Deepak Punia to fight for bronze medal. India to resume their first innings at the overnight score of 21 for no loss against England in the Nottingham opening cricket test of five match series. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing. Focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline number 011-2397-8046 and 1075. Another news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said the country's economy is now moving forward and there are clear indications which show that the country is giving a tough fight to the pandemic. Interacting with beneficiaries of the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana in Uttar Pradesh through video conferencing today, the Prime Minister said amidst the pandemic our export is at an all-time high after independence in a single month and there is record GST collection. Mr. Modi said our country is now in the list of top 10 countries in terms of agriculture exports. Taking a dig at the ongoing ruckus in Parliament, the Prime Minister said just because of their political interest, the opposition is disrespecting Parliament continuously. He said the Parliament cannot become hostage of such people. He said while the country was making new records, then these people were busy blocking the Parliament. He said that New India is not worried about the post, but busy in winning medals. The Prime Minister also interacted with the beneficiaries of the scheme from various districts of the state. State-level function was organized in Ayodhya, where Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh Yogi Adityanath was present. On the occasion, Yogi Adityanath said the scheme helped a lot to the poor and needy people of the state who were affected by the COVID pandemic. He said this is the world's biggest food distribution program and a waterproof bag has also been added to the scheme, which will provide necessary information about the government scheme. Mentioning the historic significance of the day, the Chief Minister said that last year the Prime Minister was himself present in the city and his government is trying to fulfill the PN's dream of a new Ayodhya. He informed that 17 development projects worth 138 crore rupees have been completed while work on 54 mega projects worth 3,136 crore rupees are going on in the city. Yogi said that new development projects worth 8,568 crores are proposed for the city. Uttar Pradesh is celebrating Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana Day today. The function is being organized as Anna Mahotsav and the address of the Prime Minister was telecast live at all the PDS shops of the state. 
A massive awareness program has been launched throughout the state to ensure that no beneficiary is left out from availing the benefits of the scheme. Many ministers of the state, along with MPs and MLAs and other senior administrative officials, took part in the functions across the state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that the country's economy is now moving forward and there are clear indications which show that the country is giving a tough fight to the nation. The stalemate in Parliament continued today following relentless protest by the opposition over Pegasus snooping, farm laws and other issues. Both the Houses of Parliament have been adjourned till 2 p.m. In the Lok Sabha, when the House met after first adjournment at 12 noon, opposition parties including the Congress, TMC, DMK and others continued with their sloganeering. Amit Din, Congress leader Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary tried to raise the issue related to sexual assault and death on a Dalit girl in Delhi. Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Arjun Ram Meghwal said that the, con- that the government is more concerned about the welfare of women and accused the opposition of not willing to discuss issues. The presiding officer rejected the adjournment notices given by the opposition members. As uproar continued, the presiding officer adjourned the House till 2 p.m. Earlier when the House met for the day, opposition parties including the Congress, TMC, DMK and others continued with their sloganeering and created a deadlock during the question hour over Pegasus snooping, farm laws and other issues. Repeated requests by Speaker Om Birla went unheard and the House was adjourned till 12 noon. In the morning, the House congratulated the Indian men's hockey team and Indian boxer Lovlina Burgen for the laurels in the Olympics by the members thumping their desks in unison. The Speaker said that the nation was proud of the achievements of the daughters in particular. In the Rajya Sabha, when the House met after second adjournment at 12 noon, Leader of the Opposition Malikarjun Kharge, while referring to yesterday's incident, said, The suspended MP was coming to the House to collect bag and other things. He said blaming the MP is wrong. Responding to it, Union Minister Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi criticized the opposition, saying the government has no objection over protest, but violence cannot be justified. He condemned the incident and accused the opposition of trying to hijack the House. Amit Noisy Scenes Deputy Chairman Harivansh tried to run the questionnaire, but in vain. Later, he adjourned the House till 2 p.m. Bharatiya Janata Party today attacked the Congress and other parties for raking up the Pegasus snooping issue without any evidence. Briefing reporters in New Delhi, senior BJP leader Ravi Shankar Prasad said the Congress has not given any evidence till date that the phones of their party leaders have been tapped. He said when the electronic and IT minister Ashwini Vaishnav was making a statement on the Pegasus issue in Parliament, the members of the opposition party tore the papers in front of the minister. Mr. Prasad said the government is ready for discussion on the issue, but the Congress is disrupting the proceedings of both houses of Parliament. चर्चा होगी हम चर्चा करने को तैयार हैं कहने के लिए बहुत कुछ हमको है काफी तीखे सवाल हमें कांग्रेस पार्टी से पूछ रहे हैं पूछेंगे हम लोग लेकिन एक सवाल बहुत गंभीर है क्या कांग्रेस पार्टी ईमानदारी से चर्चा चाहती है या विपक्ष लोग चर्चा चाहते हैं क्या बस कीचड़ उछालना और वॉकआउट करना यही तो इनका अतीत का तरीका रहा है और एक करोड़ रूपया अभी तक ये जो पूरा डिस्ट्रप्शन हुआ है दे हैव कॉस्ट एक्स का इन द टू सेशन तो हम दोबारा कहना चाहेंगे कि आज के संसद का सम्मान कांग्रेस के संस्कार में नहीं है न्यूज जस्ट इन लोकसभा हैज बीन एडजर्ड टिल 4 पीएम Airports Authority of India has planned to invest around 25,000 crore rupees in the next four to five years for the development of existing and expansion of new terminals by using modern technology. This information was given by Minister of State for Civil Aviation General Dr. V.K. Singh retired in a written reply in the Lok Sabha today. He said the government will continue to undertake high-tech measures for improvement in civil aviation sector in the country. India has crossed yet another milestone in the COVID vaccination drive as the total vaccination coverage has crossed 49 crore mark today. Union Health Ministry has termed it India's landmark achievement in the fight against COVID-19. The country has reported 42,982 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. A total of 41,726 patients also recovered from the infection during the last 24 hours. The recovery rate is currently at 97.37%. 
The center has advised states to actively consider imposition of local restrictions in public observation during the upcoming festivals and curb mass gatherings. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan has written a letter to Chief Secretary of all the states in this regard. He said the trajectory of daily new cases has shown a steady decline over the last month, but there are a few states which still reflect signs of upsurge in the daily cases and positivity. Mr. Bhushan said, in view of upcoming festivals such as Muharram, Onam, Janmashtami, Ganesh Chaturthi, and Durga Puja, where large public gatherings are expected, states are advised imposition of local restrictions. In Bihar, COVID vaccination crossed over 2 crore 50 lakh mark in the state. The state ranked second in the country in respect of vaccination. Of them, 40 lakh 67 thousand people have taken both the doses. The state recovery rate has risen to above 98 percent, while the test positivity rate has declined to below 1 percent. Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia today held a meeting with the chairman of Dr. Reddy's lab, Dr. Satish Reddy, in New Delhi. In a tweet, Mr. Mandavia said he held a discussion on the production of the Sputnik V COVID vaccine and its supply. In Kerala, the new COVID guidelines and exemptions came into effect from today. Our correspondent has more details. The new COVID restrictions will be based on the number of COVID cases per 1,000 people rather than the TPR-based strategy. If more than 10 people per 1,000 population test COVID positive in an area, within a week, a triple lockdown will be imposed in the area. Shops and commercial establishments will remain open for six days in a week and allowed to function till 9 p.m. Those arriving at the shops must have received at least a single dose of COVID vaccine or should have an RT-PCR negative certificate taken within 72 hours. Only 20 people will be allowed for marriage and funeral ceremonies. Places of worship can only accommodate a maximum of 40 people. Malls will not be allowed to open. Only partial service are allowed in hotels. Restaurants and eateries can be open till 9.30 p.m. No more complete lockdown will be imposed on Saturdays and there will be no lockdown on upcoming two Sundays in view of Onam and Independence Day. Mayusha for AR News from Tiruvannathapuram. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with the beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana in Uttar Pradesh through video conferencing. Both Houses of Parliament witness frequent disruptions over Pegasus snooping, farm laws and other issues. Country crosses 49 crore mark under nationwide vaccination drive. COVID-19 recovery rate stands at 97.37%. Centre asks states to consider imposing COVID restrictions and curb mass gatherings in view of upcoming festivals. Rescue and relief operations in full swing in the flood-affected areas of Madhya Pradesh. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar begins his two-day visit to Iran from today. Indian and Russian armies begin joint exercise Indra 2021 at Volgograd in Russia. U.S. approves arms sales worth $750 million to Taiwan amid tensions with China. Indian men's hockey team scripts history with bronze medal win in Tokyo Olympics. Prime Minister congratulates Team India on their historic feat. Wrestlers Ravi Dhaya to fight for Olympic gold medal and Deepak Punia to fight for bronze medal. India to resume their first innings at the overnight score of 21 for no loss against England in the Nottingham opening cricket test of five match series. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. <laughs> Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. As India won a medal in hockey in the Olympic Games after a long wait of 41 years, the entire nation is celebrating the rare feat achieved by the hockey team. The greetings are pouring in from every nook and corner for the men in blue.
The Indian men's hockey team scripted history with their sticks as they defeated Germany 5-4 to win a bronze in the Tokyo Olympics. Eight-time Olympic hockey champion India won a medal at the Games after 1980. Overall, this is the 12th medal in hockey and third bronze for India in Olympics. For India, Simranjit Singh scored two goals and Harman Preet, Hardik and Rupinder Pal Singh scored one goal each. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah have congratulated the Indian men's hockey team for winning the bronze medal in men's hockey at the Tokyo Olympics. The president in a tweet said the team showed exceptional skills, resilience and determination to win. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu said the country is proud of skillful and competitive game of the team. The Prime Minister in a tweet described it as a historic day that will be etched in the memory of every Indian. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also spoke to the Indian men's hockey captain Manpreet Singh, head coach Graham Reed and assistant coach Piyush Dube. He congratulated the team for emerging victorious and bringing home the bronze. The Prime Minister told Manpreet Singh that they have scripted history. Mr. Modi remarked that today Manpreet's voice is loud and clear whereas it was slightly muted the other day when India lost to Belgium. Manpreet thanked the Prime Minister for his constant encouragement to the team. Let us listen to the conversation. Namaskar, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, you have a lot of advice for us. Thank you, sir. सर आपका जो मोटिवेशन था वो काफी काम किया सर हमारी टीम के लिए थैंक यू सर देखो सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर मैं दे दूंगा सर जरूर सर हाँ जी सर है साथ में सर सर नमस्कार बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर उसने आप उस दिन आपने जो प्रोत्साहन दिया था ये उसी का कमाल है जी जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मोदी जी आपका और मोदी जी मेरे साथ में जी मेरे साथ में चीफ कोच भी है ग्राहम रीत आप उनसे अगर बात करना जी 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 सर I hope we have made you proud. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's fantastic, huh? Yeah, <laughs> they have. And thank you. It is, it is, uh, it's so good to see. It's so good for India, huh? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, and, and sir, sir, your, your words? Your words the other day after the semi-final were fantastic and very inspirational to us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. In a tweet, Home Minister Amit Shah said Indian hockey team have made the entire nation proud. He said it is a moment of immense pride and joy for every Indian. Minister for Youth Affairs and Sports Anurag Thakur has congratulated the Indian men's hockey team for winning a bronze medal in Tokyo Olympics. Mr. Thakur said that our men's hockey team dominated and defined their destiny in the Olympic history books today yet again. He said that the country is extremely proud of the hockey team. चालीस वर्ष का इंतजार कोई छोटा नहीं होता एक लंबे इंतजार के बाद हॉकी टीम ने जहां एक और क्वालिफाई किए सेमीफाइनल्स में वहीं पर ब्रॉन्ज मेडल जीतकर कांस्य पदक जीतकर 135 करोड़ भारतीयों को चेहरे पर मुस्कुराहट लाई है और तिरंगे का मान सम्मान बढ़ाया है मैं तो कहूंगा युवा मेंस हॉकी टीम ने जो ये पदक जीता है ये अपनी दृढ़ निश्चा के कारण अच्छे खेल के कारण न केवल पदक बल्कि एक करोड़ भारतीयों का दिल भी जीता है Odisha Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik has congratulated Indian men's hockey team on their winning bronze medal at the Tokyo Olympics. In a tweet, he has said that this historic win will inspire generations of sportspersons. A report. 
the coveted bronze in Olympics in the men's hockey has sent feel good waves across Sundargarh district in Odisha in particular and the state in general and rightly so first because the olympic medal has come to india after a gap of 41 long years and second because sundargarh in odisha has been the cradle of hockey in the country which has nurtured some of the best hockey players in the world like former captain of the indian hockey team dilip tirki and lazarus barla the present winning team too has two brilliant hockey stars namely amit rohidas and virendra lakra from odisha this apart the indian women's hockey team currently aiming high in the olympics too has namita tapo and deep grace ekka as the teammates from odisha girish chandra das air news bhubaneswar indian wrestlers will display their skills after a couple of hours here is a report from sports desk Rejuvenated Indian grapplers will start their hunt for medals after a couple of hours. Ravi Dahiya will fight for the gold against the reigning world champion Javur Ugaev of Russian Olympic Committee in the freestyle 57 kg final. However, in women's category there were disappointments for India as Venice Fugat lost her quarter final match to Venesha Kalandazinskaya of Belarus. 39 and Anshu Malik quest for bronze medal ended as she lost to Rio Olympic silver medalist Valeria Kovalova of Russian Olympic Committee 5-1 later today Deepak Punia will fight for bronze medal in 86 kg category in men's section in golf Aditi Ashok is currently tied at second her great performance in first two rounds has definitely improved our prospects of securing a medal with reporter Pratyush Ghosh this is Arun Joshi AIR news External Affairs Minister S J Shankar will be on a two day visit to Iran beginning today. He will attend the swearing in ceremony of the president elect Ayatollah Saeed Ibrahim Raisi today. During his visit Dr J Shankar will call on the president and on the sidelines he will also meet other leaders. In Madhya Pradesh rescue and relief operations are continuing in full swing in the flood affected areas. NDRF, SDRF, Army and BSF teams have rescued more than 6000 people from 240 affected villages in northern Madhya Pradesh. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu and Home Minister Amit Shah today spoke with Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan and inquired about the present situation. More from our correspondent. More than 1000 villages have been affected in Shivpuri, Shyopur, Dattia, Gwalior, Bhind due to excessive rains and floods. Chief Minister also took a stock of flood affected villages through aerial tour in Gwalior and Chambal divisions. Adequate arrangements of food, water and accommodation are being made for people who have been rehabilitated in the relief camps. Chief Minister informed that center is providing full help to state for relief work. Pooja P Vardhan AIR News Bhopal The Indo-Russia joint training exercise Indra 2021 commence at Trudboy Rangers Volgograd in Russia yesterday. It started an impressive opening ceremony that saw the unfurling of the national flags of both countries. Exercise Indra 2021 will enhance interoperability between the Indian and Russian armies. The aim of the exercise is to facilitate joint training between Indian and Russian armies to jointly plan and conduct counter terror operations under the United Nations mandate. The conduct of the exercise will also entail academic discussions between expert groups of both contingents. United States has approved its first arms sale to Taiwan amid rising tensions with China. US State Department has approved arms deal worth 750 million dollars to Taiwan. Taiwan Ministry of Foreign Affairs said the decision demonstrates the US government's commitment to Taiwan. It also allows Taiwan to maintain a rock-solid self-defense and regional peace and stability. The move comes at a time when tensions between China and Taiwan are growing. The relations between China and the US have also deteriorated in recent times due to various reasons, including Indo-Pacific and coronavirus pandemic. China has repeatedly threatened Taiwan with invasion and has adopted a aggressive policy to intimidate the self-governing island. Railway Minister Ashwini Vaishnav today said that in the last 2 years since the abrogation of Article 370, Jammu and Kashmir has seen a massive development in railways. In a tweet, Mr. Vaishnav said Jammu and Kashmir will soon get its first phase of metro rail service. He said the center has set a target to connect Jammu and Kashmir with railways by next year. Several functions are lined up to mark the second anniversary of abrogation of Article 370, Article 35A and Declaration of Union Territory Status for Ladakh today. 
Our correspondent has filed this report. Today is second anniversary of declaration of Union Territory for Ladakh. Azadi ki Amrit Mahausab, Swatch Ladakh, Swatch Ladakh have been main themes of the celebration of second anniversary of abrogation of Article 370 and creation of Union Territory for Ladakh. Lieutenant Governor Ake Mathur launched series of events on this theme. Ten-day-long cleanliness drive across Ladakh has begun from today. Lieutenant Governor also launched cleanliness signature campaign and handed our refuge compactor and grabbing machine to the lay municipal committee. It was also good news for magazine readers and literary interests as Mr. Mathur also relaunched State Jan Ladakhi oldest newspaper titled Ladakh Ponya as bilingual monthly magazine with Ramesh Chandra Yangshan Rolma for air news from the Ladakh. In a move to give a boost to execute development projects in Assam, the state government, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development and Assam Infrastructure Financing Authority inked a memorandum of understanding in Guwahati yesterday. As per the MOU, 13,200 crore rupees will be used for infrastructure development for NABAD, Infrastructure Development Assistant, NIDA and Rural Infrastructure Assistant to State Government, RIAS, in rural and semi-urban areas across the state. Speaking on the occasion, Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma termed the day historic as he hoped that it would usher in new era of development in the state. He also said that the MOU would launch a series of capital-intensive projects to bring about paradigm shift in the development narrative of the state. Himachal Pradesh received five oxygen-fitted ambulances by Mahindra Group under the Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR, in Shimla today. Chief Minister Jairam Thakur flagged these ambulances for development deployment at various places of the state. All five ambulances would be provided to IGMC Shimla, Kinnor, Kandaghar, Janjeli and Noorpur hospitals. While thanking the Mahindra Group for the philanthropic gesture, Mr. Thakur said these ambulances would go a long way in supplementing the efforts of the state government for mitigating the suffering of the patients. India will resume their first innings at the overnight score of 21 for no loss against England in the opening cricket test of five-match series. England were all out for 183 runs in their first innings on day one at Trent Bridge in Nottingham yesterday. Early England captain Joe Root won the toss and elected to bat first. Now let us take a look at the weather update for today. National capital Delhi is predicted to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Temperature will rise from a minimum of 27 to a maximum of around 35 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain and temperature will hover between 25 to 31 degrees. Chennai will witness a generally cloudy sky and light rain will have a maximum temperature of around 36 degrees recorded a ma- minimum temperature of 28 Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. Srinagar will experience partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Temperature will hover between 18 and 30 degrees. Jammu will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Leh is likely to witness a partly cloudy sky. Tem- lower limit of temperature was 13 degrees. Upper limit will be nearly 28. Gilgit will have a partly cloudy sky and temperature will hover between 20 and 36 degrees. Muzaffarabad will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Guwahati will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacts with beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana in Uttar Pradesh through video conferencing. Says country's economy is now moving forward, clearly indicating the country's resolve to give a tough fight to the COVID pandemic. Both houses of parliament witnessed frequent disruptions of a Pegasus snooping, farm laws and other issues. Lok Sabha adjourned till 4 p.m. country crosses 49 crore mark under nationwide vaccination drive covid-19 recovery rate stands at 97.37% center asks states to consider imposing covid restrictions and curb mass gatherings in view of upcoming festivals rescue and relief operations in full swing in flood affected areas of madhya pradesh external affairs minister s jay shankar begins his two day visit to iran from today Indian and Russian armies begin joint exercise Indra 2021 at Volgograd in Russia. US approves arms sales worth 
$750 million to Taiwan amid tensions with China. Indian men's hockey team scripts history with bronze medal win in Tokyo Olympics. Prime Minister congratulates Team India on their historic feat. And with that, we end the midday news.